Hey, Internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy Event Marketing. Everything Synergy, just like that. So I've got my friend Mike O'Neill. He's the LinkedIn rock star, quite virtually wrote, or not virtually, quite actually wrote the book on it. He's the LinkedIn rock star, and he teaches us all about LinkedIn and how to use that for the event industry is the topic we're going to be talking about. So are you there? Can you hear me, Mr. Mike? A loud and clear. That's a lot of Synergy. Yesterday, we talked about Facebook with Janet Johnson. So today, we're going to talk about LinkedIn, because that's your expertise. Oh, my stuff. Oh, you want Absolutely. to talk about my stuff? Oh. It's all about you, Mike. <laughs> all righty. <laughs> so what I'm interested in is how to use LinkedIn with the event world. I know that LinkedIn, has started, they used to have events, and now they no longer have events. But what you do is you do something with LinkedIn Navigator, which is a, a step above the free version of it. And from what I understand with your, your business, is the whole thing about um, lead generation and how to use other platforms and sort of mine the uh, leads in LinkedIn. Could you give us a basic basics of how you, what your business is and how you help people? Well, well f first of all, I don't, I don't help everybody. You know, I, I swim in a very <laughs> narrow lane. I only help certain, certain sorts of people, you know? Um, so one of the things is since I'm in a narrow lane, you know, the other lanes in the pool are all good partners of mine. So like Janet Johnston is my, is my, my, my gal on Facebook and Carrie Swillers is my person over here and all that. I do the LinkedIn stuff. So, so please, anything I talk about here, I'm talking about my stuff here and, and with knowledge of, of what happens in the, in the other stuff. It's the same pool of water. Okay. Um, sure. But, but I, I, have a, I take a data-oriented approach to things. There, there's two buckets of thought. There's the side over here, the billboard people, the people that like to post and, and blog and content. You're in this category. Sure. Okay. You. You know, they're, they're out there. They got their face in front of it. They're instantly recognizable. You know, you, you, just, you just know tomorrow you're going to see something from them, you know. Um, right. So there's that whole side and, and being one of those folks. Okay. So the other side in the LinkedIn social media space, this is business social media with LinkedIn, is the data side. It's, it's the inbox. It's not the feed, as we say. It's the inbox. So if you think about Facebook, I can send you a message on, on Facebook, right? Or I can post to the, my timeline. In Facebook, you post to the timeline. In, in LinkedIn, good, good luck getting business from that because the timeline is curated by LinkedIn and it, you got thousands of people all caught blobbing together on this timeline out here. Good luck, good luck making, making use of that. And some people really do. Okay. They're, the, they're the blessed ones from, from LinkedIn that, that, get, um, that are curated. You know, they're, they're bona fide. They're, they're, you see the in, it says influencer on them. They're right. the ones eating up the territory at the top. You're just not going to get to people too well through there. Now, it can reinforce other things, but relying on that to bring you business is like relying on a billboard to bring people to the door. You, you got to be selling some people really need, you know, water in the middle of the desert, billboard works great. Okay. You know, crowd world, not so great. Okay. So the other way is, is to get to people through their inbox. And that involves connecting with people first so you can really own the inbox to them. Otherwise, their inbox doesn't mean much to you because until you connect, you can't really do so much with it other than try to connect. Um, there is a function called in-mail. Have you heard of in-mails? I have and don't understand it. <laughs> you know, don't worry about them, but I'm going to cover them here. I'm going to cover them in a way that will explain why you don't use them in general. How is that? Here's why you don't use them. Um, they seem really commercial. They say in mail. They might even say sponsored and stuff in them. When they come into your inbox, it's spam. It's spam that someone paid LinkedIn to spam you. I'd rather be spammed directly by people who didn't pay $10 to LinkedIn to spam me with a message, quite frankly, um, because there's some accountability there. I can disconnect from somebody if they want to do that sort of stuff. In mails go to twos and threes, okay? They, in mails go to people you're not connected to just as if you were. I see. So you can cut out that. I need to connect first before I send a message part if you use in mails, but, but so, they're, they're, so they're in, considered commercial spam. In theory, that sounds like you're kind of jumping or you're quantum leaping, but the reality is you haven't really developed much of a relationship. So it's that's right. Invite, invite, do, do it the invi invite and message way. Don't do it. Don't do it that other way. But to do so requires some, you know, some, some systemization. 
you know, you've really got to understand how to do this. Otherwise I can do a few, you know, but how am I going to do a lot of them? You know, and marketing is not a matter of, you know, what three people am I going to reach today? That's called networking. That's different. Um, marketing is, is how do I reach my hundred or 200 or 300 new people today? And what about tomorrow? Tomorrow, the paper boy brings more, as Pink Floyd, Floyd says, right? <laughs> what am I going to do tomorrow for, for, my, for my feed? I need a steady feed. And that's systemized. Steady feed. And that's how you have to kind of systemize, yeah. Got it. You know, what's today's list, tomorrow's list, next day's list? I don't want tomorrow's list and today's list to it contain the same people. My gosh, what would happen? Well, here's a quick question. Say, for example, because what I'm in is the events industry, and my audience is more people in the events world. How do you niche that out and find people that are specifically in the, the uh, event industry? The, the way that I do it sometimes is there's a certification with Meeting Professionals International, CMP, Certified Meeting Professional. So if I search yeah. those words, I will find those certified meeting professionals. That's right. And I'm only interested in people in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. So how do you niche them down with the me methods you're talking about? I have a great tip for the group here. <laughs> so pay close attention to this there. So what, what Brad's talking about is using keywords for the most part. You know, you're, you're matching. It might be in a job title, but it's like a keyword, right? right. This word's got to match their word. Okay. But there might be this word or this word or this word or this word or this one, right? You know, there got might it. be a number of them. Could be, could be meeting planner, meeting organizer, meeting blank, meeting blank. Some of those have a phrase around them. So you got to put quotes if it's more than one word. <laughs> but you're fundamentally got a stack of words together. Okay. So, so you create your beautiful search that's got all this other stuff in it. I'm going to skip a few steps because because you're ju I'm just going to talk about your words, okay? At the mm -hmm. first, okay? So we might say, oh well, maybe I, you know, meeting planners at bigger companies, right? You yeah. Know, maybe maybe corporate meeting planners, you know, are different than individuals who might meeting plan as as a separate person, and they can be separated out using a filter called the company size filter in Sales Navigator. So I can say I want employ companies that have a thousand or more employees, you know, they have certain kind of events and people that have smaller companies, different kinds of events. So you've got titles at companies and all, but no matter what, we put all these beautiful search parameters together and we get this list and guess what? Half the people on that list are no good and half sure. of them are. Let's just say that. What are we going to do? We're systemizing now. So what are we going to do? We're going to create a list that we can scrub. And that's where Sales Navigator comes into play. Okay. So we take the search that has the people over here. We magically do our Sales Navigator stuff. And we got the same people on this list. But on this list, I can scrub it and take out the ones I don't want. So I just got the ones I want. I've made sure that they're meeting planners in my stuff. The search found all kinds of people that don't apply. In fact, it might be one out of four. You know, I've seen it one out of 10 where you're really scrubbing down. So you can think about it. If I've got 10 slots here, I can, 10, I'm just gonna use a nice round number, 10 slots. Okay. I can say, let's, let's, let's check all 10 boxes and I can go in and say, not you, not you, and have eight left, right? So I, I uncheck two of them, I've got eight left. Otherwise, I could say, you know, if, if you're going to find like one in 10 here and there, I can say, you know what, instead of tagging everyone and unchecking the list, let me just add the ones to the list that I want. My, my results are, are rather skim, you know, one, three, four, five per page, add them to the list, three, four, five on the next page, add them to a list. So you can build a list from the bottom up or scrub a list from the top down. Either way, you get a list where everyone's bona fide. Everyone is approved. You okay, so they're like, they're all like your A-list kind of thing. That's right. It's okay. not, they're, they're bona fide is the word. You know, it comes <laughs> from, I don't know what movie I saw, but you're bona fide if it's in the movie. <laughs> the woman says it's a, a brother where art thou is where that comes from. <laughs> George Clooney's wife goes, well, he's bona fide. Okay. I love that. Um, so you got our bona fide list. Now, what are we going to do to that list of people? You know, and so I, so I got these people. It's great. If, if I, I can contact them one at a time with a nice invitation and after they connect a message afterwards, doing things manually and customizing everything. It's, it's wonderful. And that scales so far. I can do 10 a day, maybe. 
you know, and tomorrow 10 more and 10 more. And you know what, they're, they're more likely to connect if you customize the invite, if the message afterwards is custom specific to them, it mentions Minnesota in the fall to me and to the other person there in San Diego, it mentions boats in the fall to them, you know, it's specific. But that doesn't scale so well. Um, um, you know, there's, there, there's ways to kind of systemize that a little bit by having an assistant, first of all, to think about a local assistant or a virtual assistant somewhere else so that they can do that stuff, you know, while you do your regular job. They make less money than you do. You know, the folks in the Philippines can be trained up to do this for five, six, seven bucks an hour. Sure. Notice I didn't say two or three bucks an hour. You don't want that level of person. Got it. So that's kind of a way to systemize it a little bit. Let me, you know, I get, I create the list here. Mike told me how to find the list. They take that list and they invite them and they try to find something, something there. If, if it's a, if it's a person overseas, they're not going to be able to customize it much. No, and, per, and primarily you I do that yourself. That's, uh, that's local in the Twin Cities. So someone over in the Philippines might not know about the Mall of America, or they might not know about the Minnesota State Fair or Hopkins that's Raspberry right. Festival or Lumberjack Days. So I'm looking for stuff that's yep. specifically for me. I'm looking for people local. Yeah, so what, what someone can do overseas is they can say someone in the Northern California area, and, and that's kind of customization that they can do. There's little if then else's. If they're in California, say this. If they're not in California, say that. Right. There's just a little little bit that they can do, but it's pretty much which pace, which am I going to copy in? <laughs> which, which one? I'm not going to. They do not the type. Uh, so fast. No. And, 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 um, and I've worked with them, and some of them are really great. But, you know, that's one way. And then there's some, some, some automation ways, some systemization ways and stuff using, using tools. And that, you're doing uh, all this primarily in LinkedIn Navigator, right? Yeah, they really require Sales Navigator because you need to go, you know, when you get, when you get busy and get, get going far and fast, you know, beyond so many a day, um, the breaks kick in on LinkedIn. And they don't kick in just for today. They kick in until the first of next month. Ser right. Seriously, I mean, as soon as, you, as soon as you start looking at too many people or seeing too much or, and your, your search results get this way, it's called the commercial use limit. And a big window comes up right here that says, I'm sorry. I, I, no, it says, it says, I'm glad you're enjoying the use of LinkedIn so much. Stop. We appreciate your enthusiasm. <laughs> but here's so, the click. Here's, here's the link to pay. And you have two choices. You can pay for premium or you might consider Sales Navigator. And, of course, what do you do? You go for the one that has the company size filter I showed you. You know, the company size filter is the big thing that, that, that gets people to, to create, to do navigator. Well, once you get all this stuff going on within LinkedIn, how do you get it out and into your own system? Or is that something you not, don't do? Do you stay in LinkedIn or do you? Well, well a couple of things. It's a, really, it's a really great question. Okay. So, so there's a way um, in, in LinkedIn to set it up so that the messages coming to you, the responses, the responses and leads that come to you are sent individually in an email to come right to you via email. They come from messages no reply at linkedin.com. Okay. And those messages come to your come to your Gmail inbox or your Outlook inbox. And I have rules set up so I automatically I, I, I bold them and I put them on my main inbox here. I put them in a folder over here. I make mark them as important, you know, those sorts of things. So the messages coming to me come actually right into my email. Okay. But I can't see the message. So here's the rub. That, that, so there's the, there's the angel part. I love that. That's great. Oh. <laughs> you don't see the message. You got to click on the link to go see the message. And it takes right. about a minute from when you click on it for it to go to LinkedIn. It doesn't even go to your LinkedIn inbox. It just goes to LinkedIn and it pops up this little message thing in the corner. And it takes about a minute. And, and guess what? The next one takes the exact same minute. It's not like well, I already loaded it up. Can I just load up another one? No. So just, just be aware, you know, you know, when you click on it, you know, click on it before you need it. It's like you plug the coffee pot in before you need a cup of coffee. Got it. Warm it up. Here, yep. Here's another question. I think that some people might not understand with the LinkedIn platform is LinkedIn isn't necessarily like if they work for a company like uh, Medtronic or Cargill or 3M, it isn't necessarily their 3M account it's their own personal account for if some reason they were let go of 3M, they end up going to a different company. It's their personal LinkedIn a, a account, correct? 
That's correct. Okay. So let, but let me, let me, let me explain upon that. That's very wise of you, Brad. That's very wise. So the account goes with the employee. So if I'm an employer here, and, and, and my sales rep has got sales navigator and he's got all of his accounts and his leads and all of this stuff going like that. And someday he just goes, I'm kind of concerned about that. Aren't you? Mm -hmm. Depends on where he goes, right? If he goes to our friendly distributor up there, I'm sure he'll pass those leads back to me when they come into his inbox. All right. Um, but should he go to an unfriendly competitor or so you got another situation. In the sales navigator world, it, it's a really tricky thing, and I'm gonna explain this here. I don't get to explain this much, but yes, it's a great question. Okay. If the sales navigator account is paid for by the company, when the employee leaves, all of that data is flushed. It's like oh, formatted wow. the hard drive. Wow, that's pretty cool. The company doesn't get it, the employee doesn't get it, it's destroyed. All that effort, tagging those people and saving the leads and the inbox and all that stuff is just gone. If on the other hand, that sales navigator license was paid for by the employee and the employee goes to the other place, stays with the employee and he keeps all of the data. I see. Okay. So that would be good for like an independent contractor sales rep or something. He wants his well, there's a third network part to go with here. Him. That's right. It's oh. good. It's bad. <laughs> There's a third part, okay? So if I'm, if I'm a boss here at my company and my, my sales rep, I, I paid for his LinkedIn, he paid for it, he paid for his own LinkedIn account. Um, I expensed it maybe, but it's on his credit card, okay? Um, um, that, that, data, that, that data goes with him, uh, but I can, and, and I'm going like, all oh, my client data is gone. There's so much in there that I would like to have maybe in my CRM system. You know, maybe, maybe it wouldn't have been nice while he was here if that data didn't flow into my HubSpot or into right. my pipe drive. Or into right, my sales exactly. Voice, right? Well, through using some of the systems and stuff and the, and the knowledge that I have, we put that data into their CRM systems. So I, don't sh I can't share a lot of that um, in public here. We do it in a Those private secret stuff. But I understand. The process, <laughs> the process of systemization is, is, is one that, that is a private conversation because it involves man and machine and everyone's got different variables. Mm -hmm. But at some point in time, you, you might think about, you know, what, how would that LinkedIn data, what would I do if I had that in my CRM system where I could email them and put in notes and, 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 and have, when the sales reps leave, I still have it, still have it. So that's, that's why people want to reach out and talk to me personally. It's a separate conversation I have. So, with so with, with that, and, and I understand, cause there's like uh, secrets, being a magician myself, there's secrets I don't like to share. That's right, it's just like you, <laughs> I understand. So I, don't, I also like, don't like to do these too long cause people have that valuable commodity of time and we want to bring this to a close a little bit here, but you covered a lot of valuable information. Perhaps down the road, we can kind of niche it out and kind of go with certain areas and do some more of these things. Um, again, I try and focus around the event industry and then you've got the whole LinkedIn area. So but we, we could talk further on that later, but before we do that, I would like to, how do we get a hold of you in case someone says, that Mike guy really knows what he's talking about. I want to know more about him. How do we find you? It's really easy, and there's two words to remember, and they're a domain, navigatinglinkedin.com. I work with Sales Navigator. I'm in the business of helping people navigate LinkedIn for the event industry, for the coaching industry, for the sales and technology industries, um, and, and it's custom really for everybody. But the building blocks I talked about, I'm going to add one more quick gem. Can okay. I? It's a really sure. good gem. All right. And this is more for folks that deal with the corporate audience. Using Sales Navigator, you might have accounts that you want to work with. Your top 100 list. I would start with the list of the top 100 places to work. Or the top, grab a uh, business journal book of lists and start with that. So you save those companies as accounts in Sales Navigator. And then you go to the company page that it has all the employees on it, right from saving the account, and right. you save people who work there that fit your mold. 
And you can even take that search that says meeting planner or this or that and stuff and run it just against that one company and see what you find. It doesn't have to search all of LinkedIn. We can say, let's just take those words and only look at 3M. Let's only look at sure. Carlson Company. All right. That's a good tip. So, so that's how you create your target list there is by finding the companies I want to work with and then the influencers there that can get me there. And of course, then I'm going to connect and message kind of like, like what we talked about. But that's, a, that's called account-based approach. And, and that would be a whole separate, a whole separate uh, show we could do. Um, lighten it up for the next one. Yeah, and I, I would, would like to do that because I'm trying to stay in the whole vertical of the events industry, but that's a lot of stuff, you know, concerts, conventions, trade shows, parties, fundraisers, galas, it keeps on going. But finding a specific niche, like if it's corporate events, you hit 3M and you find the event planners in 3M, you've got 100 right there. So that's right, because you get, and 3M is going to have not just one company page, but like six or seven company pages, sure. and you got to get them all included. These are the reasons people want to book a call with me. I'll just walk them through this stuff. It's a free call. We do 30 minutes, and, and so uh, they walk uh, out of there just with their mind, just full of ideas. So the ideas domain, they can really use, though, not just ideas that are so much they're so overwhelmed. I can overwhelm folks. You and certainly I don't, <laughs> I, I don't in those calls. Yes. So it's navigating, I-N-G, navigating LinkedIn.com. Navigating LinkedIn.com. Yeah. From there, you can set an appointment with me. There's a, call, a button there to, to book a call. There's good, good free stuff to see. You get the idea of the things that we're kind of talking about there and, and book a call. It's Perfecto. Free. Well, I'm going to put this one in the can and beam it up to the universe and we'll see who we can find. And uh, I will chat with you further. Um, maybe we will be able to stay on here and have a little further chat too. And uh, we need to get together and have a coffee and a cocktail or something you can have the cocktail i'll have the coffee that's right, right. i understand how you work in that scenario. I'll have okay the cocktail. give me that's your drink <laughs> thanks mike peace peace